we're getting in late. Uh, woke up this morning or last night, I guess, looking on the old goob tube and found a small block, $100. So <laughs> me and Jolene get up first thing this morning, got herself a little trailer and went and got this $100 small block. And I think I'm going to use it, you know, as the 40, 40 Plymouth sitting in there. It's got a Hemi in it right now. It sat there for a couple years and I could not get to it, could not move it. Um, didn't have time for it. I think the weather might have got to the Hemi. I'm pretty sure. Like when we took the valve pan covers off, it didn't look that great. But anyways, as I've as I've bought in this small block Chevy for a hundred dollars, it does not matter what kind of engine you put in your car as long as you're having fun. In my opinion, and right now at this present moment, I'm tickled pink with this 30, 305. I think it is a 305. Um, yeah, that thing will run that 40 Plymouth down the road just as fine as kind. I'm going to paint it, obviously. I'll strip it apart and paint it and do a few things to it and make it look the way I want it to look. But, listen, I'm happier and I don't want to tell how happy I am. <laughs> but anyways, we started a little late this morning. We ran and got that. For $100, you can't beat it, you know. I, I buy them all day for $100. All day. As I got that motor for $100, I picked up this four-speed transmission. So, I mean, you know, you can, you can get gear pretty cheap if you want to be on the hunt full-time. But it takes, it takes your time, and you have to do the work, and you have to go run, you have to go look. But I'm willing to do that to keep the price down, you know, to keep the price down. If I can keep the price down to mere minimal on this thing, I'll be, I'll be more happy than as if I just go out and run and buy a... $4,000, you know, short block for it. Uh, I just feel like buying it that way, meeting the people that I'm meeting. Like, like the guy today, he had a nice little S10 with a, an LS, or he had an S10 with an LS in it. And it was, man, he did a beautiful job on it, beautiful job on it. And meeting them guys, and other than just going buying something that doesn't mean anything. As we got that engine, I'm pepe. But this is what I'm going to do. Me and Jolene, Jolene got the side welded up. She got the, she got the quarter welded up like that, and I'm very happy with that. She did not warp the quarter, which I'm happy with, and there's a lot, a lot, enough meat so I can grind it. She's done the front fender, and that's great. She's done the other side both times and welded that all up too. Just us running around me trying. <coughs> I got a frog in my throat. <coughs> and it's Jolene. You know why? Because I want to jump her. <laughs> what, baby? You like that one? But anyways... Um, as I'm ro rocking and rolling here, as me and Jolene are rocking and rolling, as I'm doing some filling on the Bugatti, she's getting that welded up and running around getting motors and loading them, bringing them back, that sort of stuff. Um, we're back to the car, and here we go. This sill here I have made, obviously. The floor I have made a long time ago, and I'll show you that sometime when I'm in that stage of making a car. I will show you how to make a floor and then set a car down on top of it, and that's what I usually do. I will make a skeleton of the frame with square tubing and then I will put panels on it and then I will set my car down on top of that floor wherever I see fit. And I've done that a lot and it works out nice. As we got going on here, we got a piece going up here on the floor, going up like that on the edge of the door. This is still open. Um, this is missing and that's the stuff that we're going to fix right here at the present moment. Jolene is going to come back through this car and she's going to weld all this round tube, I got round stock in there. You can see that how I made that sill. Got round stock in there, 18 gauge, 18 gauge, and welded together. That's what I made for, I don't know, shits and giggles, I guess. That's what my brain told me to do and that's what I did. But, anyways, now Jolene's going to come along and weld that, that sill down to that running board because we're going to leave that running board like that and we're going to bring the door up, the door skin up. So, but we're going to fix this right now. Uh, I need a pair of scissors. I thought I tried to get ready, but maybe I didn't. I have a pair of scissors right there. I thought I did. Look at this. Again. Right here. A pair of scissors. I got a pair of scissors. And this is pretty simple stuff, you know. Uh, it's pretty simple stuff. It's pretty basic. It's just, to me, it's one piece at a time. And, yeah, it's just one piece at a time. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit warm. I got we turned the heat on. Huh? Yeah, we turned the heat on. 
back at this. Now, see, I got a little hole going on here. There's three different ways it's going. I got a flat spot here. I got a piece here that runs with the edge of the door. We'll cap this piece, stick it on. Then we'll make a piece that runs this little, this distance here, we'll make a piece here that runs down and meets the running board that matches the door. And then we'll cap it shut with the piece on the front. As you get going here, I'm going to tack this piece in. I'm going to tack that in. And then I'll come in and I'll square this. I want to square that off before I weld a piece over top of it. You'll never see it. But I want to square it off my own brain. On the inside where it's gone, what I do is I cut that off and then I cap it. There's a piece going up to the front. You'll see that needs to be capped. And that's what I'll do. I'll just cut it off and cap it. It does not matter what way they had it. I don't care. I'm just going to cap it off and make it so it's got no rust in it does not do anything for us, so we can make it any way we want. So anyways, as I cut that, I'm going to set that on that, that sill. I want, the sill I, want the, sorry, I want the sill welded down the bottom. I want that welded to the running board. I'm not just going to run it down straight. I could run it by and do that, uh, but I'm not. I'm going to run it right to the, to the round bar, and we'll weld that together and, and that at the same time with this piece, and then she can run it on the running board later. I'm just going to set that in there like that. Bring it up a little higher, I guess. Just take my finger, rubbing that edge. There's a piece I want. You can see where I pressed on it. I'll cut that off. I'm going to transfer that to a piece of metal real quick. Did I get any, anything for that? Didn't get nothing for that, but I can. Oh, marker right there. So what I'll do is I'll show you right here. Put that on there like that. I'll trace that. So we know we can cut the line. These things are reasonable. You can buy one any real automotive shop. I guess you could buy it at. One piece. I'm going to get Jolene to weld these all in, but I'm going to just show as we go what we're doing. So we've got a piece. It's a little big. That works. Okay. And we can see or I can see, I'm going to mark this off a little bit here in the bottom, we can see how thick that is. When I look at that, you can, you, can, you can look and see how wide that is there. So what I'm going to do, instead of me trying to get a tape measure and all that sort of stuff, when I put this piece on here like this, when I put that piece on there like that, okay, I, I see how wide that is. So I'm just going to go over there and try to cut a piece of metal that, dist that wide and lay it weld across there and weld it, bring it down to here and weld it on down there. So Jolene's going to weld this on the top of here and then she's going to weld that round bar on top of the running board here just so we have it a little more strength. I like to see it all welded together and that's what we'll do. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here my marker as you see as we look at that does not look straight either, does it? Well, it goes like this. See how it's going down like that? It looks to me like it is. It's curved here, curved here, and it's kind of going like that. So it would be wider at the bottom than it is at the top. You know, and that's just, that's just being me. That's, hmm. and we'll just cut a piece off it. And check it out. See what happens. See what happens. 
I just cut it straight. I didn't make any special move or any special cut. I'm just cutting a piece off real quick. Didn't do anything special. I just cut a piece off. You know, made it that distance. We're going to look at it first before we... So you put that piece in there like this, say, like so. Let's just shut the door. See how we got that setting in there? Let's shut the door and see what it says. And I would not do this procedure without the door on. It's just, it's one of those things where when you have something together, that's when you tell how it's done. Okay, you can come up and see right here on the side of the door. As I've got that on there, or as I can put that on there, that has to have a distance in between it, you know? So as we'll flatten that off, we'll cut that up a little bit further, then we'll lay that, maybe we'll cut it off right to, on top of the metal where it comes down the bottom of the door. We're going to go about, I can make a mark so I know when I open the door where the door is. That's, that's, that's the end. I'm going to actually mark it back a little further because I'm going to allow my door gap so I know when I weld my piece of metal on, I know I can go no further than the front of that black mark because that's my door gap. So I've got it marked now so when I go on the inside. Also, when I tack that on there, and now I can tack that on there after I get the other piece on, if I tack that on there, I can lay that in there and then mark this side. See, as I got this in there like now, like sort of like that, now I can come along here and do this, right? Now I know that shape because I got it pushed in there hard. So I know that shape now. See, remember I said it was curved, so it was smaller at the top, and it was curving out, and that's my shape. When I weld this on here, when I put the, then, then I'm going to have to put another piece on this corner. It's almost the exact same thing, but we'll do another piece real quick. I'll cut this off. I'll cut this off. So this is just playing like one piece at a time, just putting one piece in at a time, real slow. I've got a little piece going on. Now, as I've got that on there, I can almost weld that on there right there. I know because I'm on the front of this mark. I know that. And I can weld that on there. Weld that on there like that probably be better inside there further. This piece welds on like this. We tack them all together. Once we get that in there, then we can weld that to that, and then we'll weld the round rod to the bottom. And then we need one more piece for here. I'm going to flatten this off first, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use the air hose and these things. Sometimes you have, sometimes you, like for me, um, you know the exact tool that you want generally for the job and a die grinder is very handy and stuff like this if you can't get in there and cut it off a die grinder will do a lot of stuff for you we have different bits for them all for doing different stuff just want to grind <laughs> like to do is what I'd like you to do when you weld this together. So this will go like this. I think what we'll do is we'll weld that together first and then, then put this piece over top of it and then weld it right down to the running board. Mm -hmm. Or, because it just it will just fit so nice if I just run it down to the bottom running board. We're up welding it down there anyways if you know what I'm trying to say. But we'll see. That will go in there like that. That little piece goes in there like that. See that little, see that little hole there? See that little hole there? 
that's stuff, so you have to get up over top of that stuff, you know. Above that. And up over top, banged in on top of that. I'm going to tack that in for a second. Do you mind? Not at all? Okay, I'm going to tack it in. Do you want to, you're staying in? You're coming out? All right, we'll just tack this together just to show you what's going on. Why not? And all this stuff will have to be done with kitten gloves because, you know, you don't want it stuck out too far. There's no, like, when, when, when you're doing something like this, if you, get, if you get it out too far and you make it too bulky, then you start cutting at it with a grinder and stuff. Once you've got it all welded up, you start cutting at it with a grinder. Well, then you're defeating the purpose, you know. You're putting meat there. You put all that stuff, all that, you know, metal back in there, and then you get in there cutting with a die grinder after you get the door off and get cutting with make it too high. Well, it kind of defeats the purpose. So try to le leave your gaps a little bigger and leave your place a little bit free so you can use filler to make it look nice, you know. You have to try to remember that somewhat, I guess, or you should, or I try to. You have to leave room for old fill, primer, paint, all that sort of stuff. It's just nice to leave it. I'm going to tack this in here. For shit's sake. You hold the door for me, baby. That'd be perfect. Another thing also, all the metal, wherever, wherever, got lucky there, didn't I? Wherever, uh, like, like we're going to weld this round rod down here. We're going to weld this sheet metal to the round rod, then we're going to weld the round rod to the bottom. That's what we're going to do there. Wherever you're welding it together, if the metal is above the metal that you're using, so if your metal's like, so if I got this metal going like this, and I got my metal, I do not want the metal up here, so I weld the B, the, the, all the welds on top. I want to bring, weld, grind the metal down. If I have any meat left up there, I want to grind that down so I can weld right on that corner so that when we grind it off, there's still meat there. You don't want to have it up too high and have it down too low. What I'll do is I'll come in here and we'll weld that down, but I want to weld the ramrod there. I guess why I keep explaining that, just so, so someone don't know. I want to pound this back with a hammer. That's where it was before. It should be there. Good today. I'm just tacking things in place now. When that's done, when she's all welded across here, when she comes beads up, fills that full of meat, we're gonna then we'll weld that down in there. So it looks like a gap there now, but it won't be. Just a second. Ah. It won't be. Once we get that connected there, we'll fill that full. And that's what we're going to do. Now, now I'm going to take another piece. It don't look very good at the moment, but it will, you know, if you give it a little bit of time. We come out here on the outside. You can see this gap right here. This has to be beat back a little bit. We get a little bit it's getting close there. I want that, you know, a little bit of distance more. I just want something to hit it, that's all. I'll be right back. I just want something to hit it. As I'm hitting it, I'm hitting it where it's connected. Now, come take a look. See how I drove that back a little bit? Now I got my gap in there. When I weld that in there and weld across now, but now I got the gap for the door. Now all I have to do is make a little tiny piece to come in here, well from this piece to that piece, and just cover that all up. You know, um, I like this has got a little bend here. It'd almost be nice to take that bend out of it and just go straight across, right to it. Would be nice. So I'm just going to do that. Now we'll cut a piece just by eye, just by eye.
get that in there like that. Now if I take and we're going to cut that off on an angle there. I'm just going to do it by eye. Now, we weld that in there like that. I actually like it right there better. I'll tack the bottom, tack the bottom there, tack it there, and then I can beat this stuff in with the I can make that all tight with the hammer. So well, this is what we're going to do. What I didn't do is I hit it on the running board first and then went to the metal and touched it. But if I would have hit it on the metal first, it would have threw the metal out of place. You know what I'm trying to tell you? Just for tacking purposes. That's all. We got another nice little tack there. Wherever it's tight, you can tack it. It's good enough. Tight in the corner here. So I don't want that corner popped up. Now, that's tacked in there, and that's how we fix that. So now we come in here, take our time, weld it all up. We got our gap in there because we're doors on. We know that. We'll fix weld that up. Then we'll come in here. We're going to weld this down, this edge here. We'll fill this up with weld. That's, this is where we're going to fill it up with weld, but we'll run some weld up this way, try to get it in there. And then we'll weld this to the round rod and then run the round rod down to the surface. And that's why I got a little gap going on there. But once I get this weld, it will have enough meat to go down that far. Or we can tack up on, on the running board there, just push up on it a little tiny bit, and then we can make it fit. I'll grind this little tiny bit off of the grinder. Like I say, whatever is access that you don't want, try to snip it off with your grinders and make it so it's flush fitting. And um, that's how we'll fix that. Then she'll weld all the way across here. This is what's going on here now. See, this stuff has to be fixed too. Um, when we put that, there's a chunk of metal out of that. We'll just take a, a little piece of metal. We won't put it on the outside of it. We'll put the piece of metal on the inside, try to make it fit right in the hole, and then weld it shut and put some weld in there and grind off because we don't want it out any further than that. It'll probably hit the bottom of the door. Then we get this stuff all welded up and make it tight. And what I mean by that, we can weld that up with coat hanger. That's how I would do it, coat hanger. Or you can lay a little piece in there if you want to. It's just, it keeps, every time you lay something on it, it keeps building it up, building it up, and building it up, if you know what I'm trying to tell you. As I cut that back and beat that in, I still have enough room for my, for fill. Once I get that welded in there, or she gets it welded in there, there will still be enough room for fill. This is the exact same thing. We don't want to keep building this up too high, you know. Um, if you're going to do something like that, it might even be nice if you come in and snipped it off and made a little square and, and butt welded on and put a new piece in. But we're good enough with coat hangers, we can fill that full and, and die grind it out. This piece here where it's gone, put a straight piece down, weld it to the floor, and make it tight and right. I hope we helped you out a little bit. It's just a matter of little tiny pieces on that, on that corner there. There was nothing about that that was difficult at all. It's just a matter of, of fitting it all in and making it look right, I guess. And, and the way you weld it up will make, even make it look better because it's not finished. Like that corner needs a lot of weld going down there, but there's a, lot of, there's a little bit of welding there that wasn't finished. So... I want to finish it. And door gaps are fitting. That's how, that's how we would do that. Then we'll just grind that up. We'll put the fiberglass body fill on it, and then we'll go with body filler. Then, after this is all done and that's all welded on, we are going to be able to put a door skin on it. Before we actually, we have to fix the other side first. So that's what we've done. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. Joey's going to do that. I'm going to do some little more sanding on the, on the Bugatti. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Doug and Jeff, is it? Doug and Jeff are coming. Jeff's the guy, is the, the man that does the wood. Um, he has some mahogany. We're going to try to figure out how he's going to do the moldings on the inside of these windows because I sort of want to have them running the same as, you know, the other Bugattis, I guess. There's a wood trim molding goes around there. That's a funny shape to a window, so that's quite a molding to make because I want it on this edge and I want it on that edge. 
Um, we have a, a dash that Aaron cut up a long time ago. We, we, we don't want to, we, we like the style of the dash, but we want to use the, you know, the veneer finish that they would have used in the time. And that's like, you know, I don't know if they would have used the veneer finish or, or the real piece of wood probably, but we want to veneer finish something that we can get the look of the wood and uh, make it really, really, really pop. Um, it's only a small cabin inside, so I think in the end, I think it's worth it. As, as we're talking about this, um, Jolene's engine, you know, we're going to pay, we're probably going to pay, you know, more for that engine than I've ever paid for an engine in my life. But you know what? The time to detail that engine, to get all the machine work done, uh, time you set it up and, and get it running, um, it, it seems so much more worth it in the end to put it in something like this because it sort of makes the car have value. Um, right now, it's something that I've made, um, and then we start adding value to it with, like, with an engine and the, and the right, right gear, the right uh, interior, uh, the right wheels, the right everything, then it might be something that's valuable. Um, it's Jolene's car, so it does not really matter, but in my brain, it, I have to talk to somebody. <laughs> so I'm trying, you know, as I would buy a $100 engine for the 40 Plymouth, um, I will make that engine look like the way I want to and, and be just as happy. With this, I am building it for Jolene. This is Jolene's car. Uh, with the Bugatti, with a Jaguar engine, I think it makes it feel more real to her. And I, I do not blame her one bit to have a new engine in that. You can say, well, this is the, what it is and what it isn't, you know. It's a built, hand-built Bugatti with a Jaguar engine in it that's brand new. Um, you cannot say that to somebody if it's not, <laughs> right? Um, and that makes value. So as, yeah, as we're buying the engine for this one, no doubt in my mind, um, I think it makes value for this. When I put the $100 engine in this and make it look like the way I want it to look, I think that the way it looks makes value on this. It's, you know, it's a customized car. It's the way I, I figure it. I want to see it how I want it to go down the road. Um, there's two different things going on in my brain there. But uh, it's fun to figure it all out and have fun with it, you know. We met some good people today. Yeah, it was a good time. Show's on tonight. Race cars tonight. Baby, race car tonight. Anything you'd like to say? In it's in Canada. Oh, it's in Canada. That's where it's at. It's in Canada. Show's on tonight. Um, I really enjoyed the race car because... It never existed, and we got to create it. If that, we got to create it, you know what I mean? Like, it's just something that was not there. We had a chance to make it out of the stuff that we had laying around the dooryard and a few other things, and it really, yeah, it came out nice. I liked it. Have a good Thursday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.